Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with thelandgeek.com, your favorite niche real estate website. And I'm super excited for what will be called today's cheapest therapy you've ever gotten for today's guest. But before we introduce today's guest, I want to remind everybody that there is somebody who's co-hosting the podcast. You know him. You love him. It's Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmoto.com and most importantly if you're not automating your craigslist postings postingdomination.com forward slash land geek scott todd how are you mark i'm awesome and feeling pumped up and energized for our guest today i'm i'm really excited for the guest and, I, and i'll tell you why um i was reading tools of titans the other night which is like tim ferris's massive book and in the book uh he interviews uh, the creator of Dilbert, uh, Scott Adams. And Scott Adams starts talking about using affirmations. And it sounds really hokey, but he wrote, I, Scott Adams, will be a New York Times bestseller. I, Scott Adams, will be a cartoonist or a famous cartoonist or whatever it was. Like he did all these affirmations and he would write them down like 15 times. And sure enough, they all came true. And there's some science behind it. So it's really, really interesting because I'm now starting to use affirmations um, after reading that, but who's better to have as a guest to help us clear out our mental headspace than Noah St. John. Noah St. John is a keynote speaker and best-selling author who's famous for inventing affirmations. Um, now, I said affirmations, it's actually affirmations, and helping busy people achieve financial freedom. His sought-after advice is known as the secret sauce for business and personal growth. As a leading authority on how to eliminate limiting beliefs, No delivers live programs and online courses that his coaching clients call mandatory for anyone who wants to succeed in life and business. He's the author of 10 books that have been translated into over a dozen languages. Noah's engaging and down to earth speaking style always has high marks from audiences. One of the world's most sought after experts on personal growth and professional development. Noah appears frequently in the news worldwide, including ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, the Hallmark Channel, NPR. I mean, Forbes, Washington Post, the Huffington Post. Right? Finally, he's on a, res you know, a respectable media outlet, the Art of Passing the Podcast. Noah St. Jack, congratulations. How are you? Hey, great to be here, guys. Thanks. Um, I want to ask you, how the hell does Noah St. John become Noah St. John, the affirmations expert? Well, I tell you, back in 1997, I was a uh, broke college student. I was uh, a 30-year-old college student. It was my, my second time in college. And uh, I was sitting there. I'd been reading lots of self-help books because I grew up poor in a rich neighborhood. And so I was painfully aware of the difference between the haves and the have-nots. The haves was everybody else in, in my community and the have-nots was my family. And so I really, really wanted to learn how to be more successful. So I was reading all these books on how to do it. And one of the things, of course, that they told you is to use affirmations, these statements, you know, like you were just talking about saying, I am rich, I'm happy, I'm successful. And you write them down and you say them, you know, it's been said a million times. And so I was doing everything those books told me to do but meanwhile, I was sitting there. I wasn't successful. I, I wasn't happy. I was miserable. I was broke. I was divorced. I'm like, this is not working for me. What am I doing wrong here? I'm following all the directions. I'm doing everything they said. What's missing? And so I was in the shower one morning in April 1997 thinking about all this. And I said, what if there was a better way to do this? What if there was something they didn't tell us? What, there's got to be a better way to change our, our beliefs and change our lives that maybe nobody's told us. And I started thinking about it and I said, well, <clears throat> the human mind, when you think about it, we're talking about beliefs, but what is a belief? A belief is a thought, but what's a thought? And I realized a thought is, is, uh, is the process of human thought is a process of asking and searching for answers to questions. For example, if I ask you, why is the sky blue? Your brain immediately starts to search for the answer. And so I said, well, if the human brain is automatically searching for answers to questions, why are we going around making statements we don't believe? And so I said, what if we just cut out the middle man? 
And that's how I invented this process that I named and I discovered, and it is called Afformations, not Affirmations, but Afformations, A-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S. And um, so I basically put up a website uh, and wrote a book, and now I've got 10 books, as you mentioned. My new book is called The Book of Affirmations from Hay House, and I've got a book from HarperCollins. So now I'm actually the only author in history that's had works published by Hay House, HarperCollins, Mind Valley, Nightingale, Kona, and the Chicken Soup for the Soul Publisher. So that's kind of how it all started. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, Scott, Todd, if I say I am going to dunk a basketball six weeks, right, being 45 and, you know, having absolutely no, you know, leaping ability – um, it doesn't matter, right? Like, because I don't believe it. Scott, like, what, what do you think about the affirmation thing? Well, I mean, I don't, like me personally, I don't uh, sit there and write affirmations and read them out loud. And, you know, I've, I've read about that. I've heard about it. I know other people that do that. And I don't do that. What I do do on a regular basis uh, daily as I write down goals of things that I want to accomplish and I do write it as if it has already been done. Okay. So I'm not saying they're reading it, but in a way I'm kind of applying the same, I think logic behind it. You know, I, I want this amount for passive income. I want to, this is the life that I want. And whether it's, you know, I mean, I don't really know the science behind it cause I haven't studied it, but I can tell you that the things that you tend to write down, especially if you're doing it on a regular basis and you're dreaming it and you believe that you can do it, then you will accomplish it. But if, to your point, Mark, if you don't believe that you can do it, then it's just these words that are out there. And so I, I do take time to kind of, as I'm writing down these goals, I do take time to, to think like, okay, I, I see myself there. You know, like I want that house on the beach and I, I, when I'm writing it and I'm thinking about it, I'm there at the beach. And there's things that I've written down. I mean, I, a long time ago, I made a, like this, I don't know, you want to call it a bucket list or what, you know, a hundred things that I wanted to, to accomplish or do. And you write that down, you put it in a book and then you forget about it. And then you go back and you look and it's amazing how much of that stuff you've completed. You know, like I, I remember one of the things that I, I had written down many, many years ago is, okay, well, I want to, you know, I want to replace my wife's and uh, wedding ring engagement ring. I want to replace it with something bigger because when we got married, I didn't have any money. And then, you know, went and did it, you know, and it was when I, when I went and did it, it was many, many years later and I had forgotten I even written that, written that down, you know, and maybe that was the wish or the, the desire that I wanted, but all these things that you tend to write down, they, they will come, come true if you keep working for them. Noah, like, you know, Oprah talks about vision boards. Um, Scott Adams talks about affirmations or, you know, hypnosis. Uh, but what's interesting is if we don't believe it, then you're saying it won't be effective. And what is the science behind that? And also, well, how can, how can we get rid of limiting beliefs? Because I might want to, um, you know, I might, I might really want to be like a New York Times bestselling author, Right. And I might say, I, Mark, but also be the New York Times bestselling author. But I don't really believe it because I think my writing might suck. Right? How do I get rid of the limiting belief that my writing sucks and I will never be a New York Times bestselling author? Okay, well, you asked me about 12 questions in there, so I'm going to sort of try to unpack what you just said. Yeah, yeah, sorry about this. So, no problem. I got it. Beliefs. I got it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the first one that you asked, which is about how our desires affect, uh, our beliefs affect our lives. So in, in the book of Affirmations, I talk about what's called the D-bar cycle, right? D-bar stands for desire, belief, action, result. Now, this is how our lives work. We start with a desire, right? So you mentioned you want to be a New York Times bestselling author, right? So that's your desire. So it could be to replace your wife's uh, wedding ring. It could be to lose weight. It could be to find your soulmate. It could be to grow your business, whatever your desire is, all right? So that's where we start. The next thing that happens is your belief. That's the B in D-bar. So the belief is I can have that thing or I can't have that thing. Now, what I do is I ask my audiences this, you know, on my webinars, on my live events, I say, what do you guys think the default human belief is? I can or I can't. And what does everybody say? I can't. Exactly. So everybody knows that that's the default human belief. Why is that the default human belief? Because we're just programmed with all this negative shit and we just, that's what we're pounded into our brains for 100,000 years. 
So the, the, just the default human belief is I can't. Now, when you look at the next step in the D-bar cycle, the A stands for action. Now, let's just walk through it. Let's say you have a desire for something. You believe that you can't do it or have it or be it. What do you think your actions are going to be? Nothing. Nothing, exactly. Or very half-hearted or half some other part of the anatomy, right? So it's like, you know, it's like, well, yeah, I'll try it. And then, oh, it didn't work. And so you just give up, right? This is why the gyms are full on January 2nd. And by January 30th, they're empty again, right? Because, oh, I didn't lose 20 pounds. You're not going to lose 20 pounds in 30. I mean, that's not going to happen. But see, we just have this negative belief says, oh, see, I told you I couldn't do it. And then the R in D bar stands for results, right? So your results are, if you don't take action, what are your results? Nothing, right? So the point is, you, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's why we humans always make ourselves right. Isn't that interesting, right? So you have a desire for the thing. You believe you can't do it. You don't take action. You don't get a result. You go, see, I told you. And the point is, it's totally self-defeating. You, you just walked into the room without even bothering to, to start. So I, what I say to my clients is, listen, why don't we just change that belief? What if we could change your belief from I can't to I can? Or what if I could, right? Just, I'm not even, what I say to people is, I'm not even asking you to believe it yet. Just what if I could do it? Oh, what if I could? Well, if, if you could do that thing, what would you do? What actions would you take? Well, I do this, 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 and this, right? So with a New York Times bestseller, well, first, you know, you maybe write a book proposal, you find an age. I mean, you know, there's, there's 20 things you could do today, right? And none of them are really that hard. So then what's your result going to be? And so here's the other thing I, I share with my clients. I say, so when you, you have a desire, you believe you can do it, you take action, you always get what you want, right? And they go, uh, I'm like, no, of course not. You don't always get what you want, right? That's not how life works. That's the sucky thing about life. That's what's so frustrating. That's why most people give up because, you know, oh, I, but I tried and I did it and I didn't get it. And then I tell him the story, which I also tell in the book of affirmations. I talk about my friend, Jack Canfield, and he wrote a book called Chicken Soup for the Soul with his partner, Mark Victor Hansen. Do you know how many publishers they were rejected by? 144. 144 publishers said, no thanks, slammed the door in their face. And how many people do you think would have given up after one, two, five, 10, 20, 30, 100? 140? I mean, are you kidding me? So do you understand that just because you want something and you believe and you take action doesn't mean you always get it on the first, second, or 144th try. That's the, th that's the whole point here is that just because we don't get it on the first time doesn't mean you're not going to get it, doesn't mean you're not supposed to have it, but that's why we have to use all of the, the whole system. That's why I wrote another book called The Secret Code of Success, where I talk about the power habits of unconsciously successful people. So affirmations is the first power habit, but there's a heck of a lot more we have to do. Yeah, but no, it sounds so woo-woo. Is there any science behind this? No, not at all. It's all just made up. Uh, so... <laughs> 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 anyway, no, I, just left I, mean, I, just, I just made it all up. I, lo I, lo I love that you asked that. No, I mean, it, it, is there science behind it? I mean, I don't know. The point is that what I, what I have done is I've studied this for 35 years, right? I've been, I, I was, when I was a kid, I was reading books like How to Win Friends and Influence People, you know? And, you know, that book was written in, in the 1930s. And this is only, you know, 60 million copies later. So, I mean, uh, the science behind it is what I talk about is what makes what I teach different from what they teach in the law of attraction. So in the law of attraction, what they basically say is you sit and think about money and money pours in from the ceiling. I'm not sure what planet that works on, but it's not the planet Earth. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, last time I checked, we have to do this annoying thing called work to get the things we want, right? whether it's make more money or lose weight or have a happy relationship. It's not going to happen just because you sit there and think about it, right? So, um, I mean, when, when you ask about science, I'm, I'm talking about real life, you know? So, um, I mean, the point is that I think we all know from our experience what happens. And that's why I give lots of examples. I mean, just in the book of affirmations alone, there's over two dozen uh, real life examples from people who had tried everything. I mean, spent $60,000 and, you know, were deep in debt and, and had tried everything. So they thought, then they came to me. Now they're making six figures. We've helped people get, you know, make seven figure businesses, help people get their first books published, find love. Uh, we've helped kids to improve their grades, improve their self-esteem. We've had people who didn't, uh, you know, didn't take their lives. They were suicidal and they decided not to take their life because they learned how to change their beliefs. So, I mean, we've literally got thousands and thousands of real life stories from real people. You can go to noahstjohn.com and just click on the praise button 
and just see some of the examples, uh, not only from real people, but also, also from the biggest names in the industry, people like Jack Canfield, Joe Vitale, John Gray, Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. So let's say that Scott's got an affirmation, right? A belief. How often, let, like, like, how often does it happen where like that belief is maybe not really well thought out or, or thought or thought or the, I'm sorry, not the belief, the desire, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's say for example, that Scott's desire is he wants a yacht, mm -hmm. right? which you could see from an ego point of view is a great desire, right? Mm -hmm. But then it gets into the weeds of it. It doesn't make him happy. Or, or you, or let's say it goes to you and say, hey, this is my affirmation. I'm gonna, I want to get a yacht. And you kind of, you're like, well, you know, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this. You're going to get a yacht. And you're going to go through all this work. And then you're going to get it. And you're like, well, I, I want to sell it, right? The two best days of a yacht owner when they buy it and they sell it. So, and you kind of know this based on all this experience. How often do you say to somebody, well, maybe, your desi maybe you got to think more about your desires first. I think that's a great point because whether you want a New York Times bestseller or you want a yacht or, you know, you want to lose weight, there has to be, you know, and I talk about this in the secret code of success, what I call why twos and why not twos. So anytime we're going for a goal, it's like driving a car. In a car, you have two forces. There's driving forces and restraining forces. The driving force is your foot on the gas. The restraining force is your foot on the brake. We humans are exactly the same. So the foot on the gas is what I call your why twos. Your why twos of success. Why do you want that yacht? And I mean, I, I want to enjoy the sun. I want to have time with my family or I want to, you know, feel like I'm important. It's, a, it's for my ego. It's so that other people are envious of me. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's dozens of, of things that are reasons that you could want that yacht or that book or that, you know, to be healthy and so forth. And so the point is a lot of times when we have that extrinsic desire, meaning it, it's, it's really for purposes that, that don't really fulfill you, um, then you're going to have trouble with that goal, whether you get it or not. So what I'm looking for as, uh, you know, people call me the millionaire mentor or the power habits mentor, what I'm looking from a mentoring point of view is, okay, I, I'm more interested in your why twos and why not twos than what you want. What you want is important, but what's more important is the why twos and why not twos. So the why twos are the driving forces that are driving you towards that goal, but what are the restraining forces? What's holding you back? Why don't you have it right now? Right? Why, why, have you, why have you been stopping yourself? Is it what I call head trash? A lot of times that head trash is that belief that says, well, I just, I can't do it. You know, I'm not smart enough or I'm not talented enough or, you know, I'm too old. I've made too many mistakes or I don't have the right, I don't have enough money. I don't have the right connections. There's tons of head trash that we can have and that's what's going to hold you back. So how do we get rid of the head, the head trash? Well, the, one way to get rid of the head trash is to, first of all, use affirmations. All right. So affirmations are empowering questions that immediately change your subconscious thought pattern. So a classic affirmation, right, a statement is I am rich, right? You write that down. I am rich. You say, and I, I do this at my live events too. It's just really funny. I say, all right, everybody, we're going to stand up and say, I am rich. Everybody goes, I am rich. And then you know what happens? They'll start laughing. I'm like, what are you laughing at? They go, well, I'm not rich, but you just said you were. Yeah, but I don't believe it. You see what I mean? So the problem isn't the statement. The problem is we don't believe the statement. So an affirmation is an empowering question. So a, a, an example of empowering question might be, why am I so rich? Why do I have so much? Why am I in right, just at the right place at the right time? Why are the right people coming to me right now? Now, when you ask a question, by virtue of the embedded presupposition factor of your brain, your brain starts Whoa. to search for the answer. <laughs> what did you say? That's a lot of words. <laughs> embedded presupposition factor? What is the that? The embedded presupposition factor. So when you ask a question like, why is the sky blue? Guess what happens in your brain? You're searching for the answer, right? So that's what psychologists call the embedded presupposition factor, right? So it's, you, you just asked a question and by virtue of you asking it, your brain starts to search. So that's how I put two and two together. I was in the shower that I call it the shower that changed everything. And I said, why don't we just cut out the middle man and go right to the question? Instead of saying, I am rich, which I don't believe. Why don't you say, why, why am I so rich? And then your brain has to search for the answer. And then by, by virtue of just you asking, it has to set in motion for, as long as you take action. Okay, so, so that's what- so why, that's why am I a New York Times bestseller? Yes. Right. But it's not magic, right? This isn't magic. You can't say, why am I New York Times? I was telling them, okay, where is it? All right. You got to take the, yay. Right. You got to take the action. Right. And so, like I said, that's why I had to write 
several books, but I mean, the book of affirmations goes deeply into how to change your brain using these affirmations or empowering questions. And the secret code of success goes into the power habits of unconsciously successful people. What highly successful people do unconsciously that they're not even aware of, number one, and therefore, number two, they can't teach it to you. So notice that when you go to all these seminars, this is one of the reasons that people have spent tens of thousands of dollars before coming to me, they're still stuck. Then they come to me and for the first time, they start to make more money. They start to grow their business. They get their books published. They have success in whatever they want because they, I showed them how to do what highly successful people do unconsciously so the rest of us can do it consciously. Scott Todd, are you buying this? Why am I on my yacht right now? I got to go do the work to do it. You do, right? You have to take the action. Scott, do you want to do that? Do you, I don't even think you want to do that work. Uh, yeah, I want to do the, I, you know, yeah, I want to do the work. Cause if I want, if I want to be on the yacht, I gotta do the work. Right. But what's your why too? Uh, what's my why to do it? Uh, is, that, is that right? No. Am I using the right word? Yeah. To, why too? Perfectly. Yep. Yeah. I gotta think that one through Mark. <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, so now, so now he's not because look, because, here's the thing, just like driving a car, right? Yeah, like, let's say you want to go on a trip because going from where you are to where you want to be is taking a trip, a, a, a virtual, a real trip. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a journey, right? So the point is going from where you are to where you want to be. There's always going to be roadblocks, detours, you know, red lights, uh, things we don't expect, right? So what most people are doing is waiting in their driveway for every light to turn green before they leave the driveway. Well, when is that going to happen? Never. It's never going to happen. So most people are waiting for everything to be perfect before they take action. And so what I, you know, one of the things I say to my clients is, hey, guys, nothing's ever perfect. We have to take action and we figure it out as we go. That's how I started my company, my college dorm room with $800 to my name and a book on how to do HTML. This was in 1997, 20 years ago. I had no idea what I was doing and I had no money, no experience, no, you know, no business skills, no people skills, really. And I figured out how to do it. Now I'm, you know, a best-selling author. I have those books that I mentioned. And I mean, everything's happened just one step at a time with a lot of twists and turns, but I figured it out as I went. And that's what, I mean, anybody can do it. Why are my kids so happy and independent and good people? It's a good one. Yeah. A lot of parents love affirmations and kids love affirmations. How old are your kids? So I've got 11, 13, and 16. They, kids love, love affirmations. I can't tell you how much they love them, Mark. So definitely share, share the book with them. They will, they'll love it. We've had so many, we had, in fact, I tell a story in the book about a 13 year old uh, girl, Stephanie from Wisconsin. And she was, uh, she was nervous. She was, um, she was losing sleep. She couldn't sleep. She was very, just, you know, a very smart girl, but just very um, nervous and, and, you know, uh, losing sleep and her parents, you know, tried everything. They were considering going, taking her to therapy. They just were pulling their hair out. Uh, the mom uh, heard me speak at a conference, talk about affirmations. She was so excited. She immediately shared the book with her daughter. Now, her, her daughter, that very night, started using affirmations. She never lost another night of sleep. She literally cured her insomnia in one night using affirmations. Now she's, uh, you know, she's, well, this, <laughs> she's basically a, a, a nice, uh, very confident young woman. And it really totally changed her self-esteem, her self-confidence. Uh, so anyway, we got lots of kids using affirmations to improve their grades, build their self-confidence. So parents and kids uh, love affirmations. I, I really love this, Scott Todd, just because it makes you think about the real questions in your life. Yeah, it, it, and it makes you start to work through the, the how you're going to get there and the why, and it brings to you new problems. Yeah, I mean, it feels a little woo-woo to me, almost like the secret feels woo-woo to me. But I'll tell you what. I think that there's a lot of value in just asking those questions and who screwed the science. I don't know how electricity works, right? You know how your car works? I don't know how my car works. Or a computer. I don't know how a computer works. <laughs> exactly. But it, wor but it works. And I'll give you an example, um, a personal example. And Noah, maybe you can uh, speak to this. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, a couple years now, I've been obsessively like like an like a drug addict checking email on my phone right stoplight check email um you know i feel a little anxious check email uh you know eating dinner with the kids and the family got to go to the bathroom don't have to go to the bathroom just going to just you know got to go check my, my email right <laughs> i get like these little dopamine hits and i'm excited to check email like what's going on what's going on right um 
Mm-hmm. And then a few, like a, a week ago, I said to myself, commencing shutdown. Like I checked my email one last time, like around 5.30, check my schedule for the next day. And I say to my, myself, commencing shutdown, which sounds a little hokey, I admit, right? I'm telling you, every night I've been doing this at 5.30, I've checked email twice a day. I honest, my hand, no cheating, twice a day, weekends, twice a day, I put it in my schedule. I feel great. I'm more present. I'm more relaxed. My wife likes me again. My kids like me again. And you're shaking your head. Like, is that an affirmation? Like, why is that working? (laughs) Well, I mean, you didn't do it as a conscious affirmation in the way that I teach in the book. And, but what you did is great. I love what you did. And you definitely did one of the things that I talk about, which is to be present. Okay. So this is one of the, one of the things that is a huge problem for people is all these constant interruptions and distractions. And my argument is 90% or more of them are self-done. In other words, you were causing that self-distraction. Get my little play on words there, self-distraction, self-destruction. Get it? See what I did there? My point, you see my point? So the point is you, you just, for whatever reason, something hit you. There was probably, I'm guessing, there was some kind of event or some awareness that you just said, hey, what am I doing here? You know, either somebody, you know, your wife said something to your kid or again, it was just came from inside of you, wherever it came. But there was a, a, a mitigating circumstance. Isn't that true? Just something occurred to you. It, it, was, it was awareness of, of how much time I was not being present, right. how distracted I was, right? It suddenly became like, it, like, a light, like I kind of know it intellectually, but finally, like I really felt it. For right. Time. Exactly. And that's a great example of that we can know something up here, but until it gets down here, then we really don't take action. We humans are emotional, not logical. And so the point is, you, I mean, you did it. And so, you don't, you know, listen, our formations aren't like a cure-all for, for everything, even though they are a great tool to use. So, you know, when you say it's woo-woo, my response to that, Mark, is that what does woo-woo actually mean? See, nobody really knows what that phrase means. What I take it to mean. Fuzzy science. Like there's no science. Right. Okay. But what I take it to mean is that when you, when you just think of something, then you're expecting it to happen. That isn't science. That isn't reality on planet Earth. Right? On planet Earth, like I said earlier, we have to do this annoying thing called work. That is reality. Now, where's the science behind that? Uh, it's called you, li- you're, you're, you live, right? You, you exist. You get it that you have to do work. I mean, is there a scientific study that says you have to do work in order to get a result? I, I don't know. I'll have to look that up when we get off this call. But my point is, I think when people think of woo-woo, that's what they think of. They think, oh, if I just think of something, I'll get it, which we all know is bullshit. You see what I'm saying? And I am calling bullshit on the law of attraction crowd. And by the way, I'm not speaking out of school because everybody in the secret is in my book, right? Everybody in the secret, Asaraf. I mean, Asaraf wrote the forward for the book. Canfield wrote the forward for my other book. You know what I'm saying? So if you go to noahstjohn.com, you'll see that everybody in the secret knows what I'm saying and endorses me. So they know that because look, what the secret did was they, would, they had great marketing, which is they told everybody what we wanted to hear, which is if you just think about something, you don't have to do anything, you'll get everything you want. Gee, who doesn't want that? I don't wanna work, I'm lazy like everybody else, right? I wanna sit around and make money by doing nothing. Unfortunately, that created millions of what I call secret survivors. Right, secret survivors. Hey, I literally have people coming to me at the seminar. Not so much now because it's ten years old, but I mean, uh, they say, "No, I watched the secret thirty-seven times, and I'm still not a millionaire." Okay, you doing anything? Well, yeah, I'm sitting there thinking about money, and I go, "All right, step over here, please." <laughs> you get my point. Yeah, I, I, I really get your point. I get your point. So I, I will tell you, Mark. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for uh, Jack Canfield. Right. Uh, I read a book. I mean, here's a guy that that, uh, you know, as, as Noah said, he went out and, you know, published Chicken Soup for the Soul. But then he, he wrote this book in, I think it was like 2005 or six called uh, The Principles of Success. And I read this book. It is, it is a life, to me, it was a life-changing book, right? Like it, it's a mind shift, a mindset shift that you take place. And right from the first, like, chapter he is punching you with reality 
you know, like, hey, the reason that you have what you have is because you've created it. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all you. You own it and uh, get over it. Now, now let's proceed and here's how I did it. And here's a guy that, you know, he had the vision boards. He had all this stuff and he made everything on that vision board come true, including where he lived. He basically bought the house that he had, had put onto the vision board. So, I mean, here's a guy I got a lot of respect for. And so I, I, I kind of think, you know, it's not just necessarily food for, I think that there's something there. So, okay, no, you know, he brings up Jack Hanfield. Um, who are your guys? Like you're writing a lot and you're creating a lot, but whom are you learning from? Like who do you go to, to get inspiration, to think about these sort of, you know, become a thought leader, right? You know, almost, I, I forget the, uh, I think his name's Steven Johnson, the adjacent uh, possible, right? So Tony Robbins might be saying this and Jack Canfield might be saying that, but then all of a sudden, no, St. John takes both of these adjacent possible big thoughts and create something new, right? So who are your people? I would say the two biggest influences on my work have been the work of Dale Carnegie and Stephen Covey. So Dale Carnegie, of course, wrote, uh, you know, the classic book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And um, in fact, on my, uh, on, I have on my Facebook page, every day I do a Facebook Live on, it's noahnation.com. And right now we're actually, I'm going through and walking people through this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. So that was really the, he, that is the progenitor of all self-help books. And then the second book, which was a big influence on me, was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And of course, that book came out in the 80s. And uh, I actually had the opportunity to interview Dr. Covey before he sadly passed away a few years ago. Um, I was actually in college uh, at the time and I was studying uh, leadership studies. I was very consciously following in the footsteps of Stephen Covey. And I got to interview him uh, on the telephone for 20 uninterrupted minutes. So I had 20 uninterrupted minutes with Stephen Covey. And that, that I'll never forget it, it changed my life. And um, uh, he was perfect. He was exactly what you would have wanted Dr. Stephen Covey to be. He was humble, he was brilliant, he was wise, and, and he just had just such total humility. And I asked him a question, I never forgot the answer to this. I said, Dr. Covey, what do you do when people worship you? Because you know he has so many fans and all this stuff. I, I, I wanted to hear his answer to that question. And he said, Noah, he said something I'll never forget. He said, Noah, I want people to leave my programs more impressed with themselves than with me. And I said, wow, that was powerful. And so I never forgot that. And so, you know, you see in, in marketing and, you know, in, in, in my industry, you see all these guys and, you know, here's my Ferrari, here's my yacht, you know, here's my house and, and da, da, da. And, and that's, that's fine for those guys. And, and I, I got no problem with that. I mean, hey, we all want nice things, right? It's not like we want to be following a guy who lives in a van down by the river. I get that. You know what I'm saying? To, to borrow Chris Farley's line. But my point is that, that's never going to be me. That's never going to be what I show to the world. Now, I'm sure I'm losing a lot of people by, by not doing that. You know, they want to see the, the car and the house and all that stuff. And, you know, where I'm coming from is, listen, you have power inside of you. You have strength and, and skills and, and brilliance inside of you that isn't being fully addressed, isn't being fully expressed. And so one of the biggest highlights of my career is when I did get an endorsement from Dr. Stephen Covey. That's it's actually on the back of that book, The Secret Code of Success. And you know, I was able to get that before he passed away. And that's that was one of my one of my proudest moments. I, ph- phenomenal. I it's gonna be. I'm gonna ask you a, kind of a personal question. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Um, what are some of your affirmations? One of my biggest affirmations, and I'm happy to answer that. Uh, one of my biggest affirmations that I'm using right now is why do I appreciate my present? And, you know, similar to what we were just talking about, Mark, which is that, you know, being in that moment and realizing, hey, I'm here now. In fact, so I'm, I'm about to turn 50. I'm going to be 50 here in a few weeks at the time of this recording. And so, you know, when a, when a man turns 50, of course, he, you know, he looks back and he looks at all the things he wishes he would have done. And, you know, of course, he's looking ahead and, you know, wondering what's going to be next. And so I'm like, you know, there's, there's living in the past and then there's living in the future, but what about living right here in the present? And so that's, you know, one of my big affirmations right now is why do I appreciate my present? By the way, the word appreciate comes from the Latin word pratium, which means price or value. And what most people are doing with their present is depreciating, right? They're saying everything that's wrong and what they don't like, and they're complaining and criticizing and condemning. 
And so it's easy to do that, right? It's very easy to fall into that. So what I do, and it's not natural for me, I grew up, like I said, poor in a rich neighborhood. So I grew up with lack and poverty and fear, not enough. That's what was shown, shoved down my throat every second. So for me to have to do this, that's one of the reasons I wrote these books because I needed them. I really needed to learn how to change my brain, get rid of that head trash that I grew up with. And so that's why I use that affirmation. I'm going to ask you one more question before we get to the tip of the week. Um, do you feel like now at 50 and doing what you've done, do you feel like you're enough? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. No, no. I, 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 and the reason I say that is because um, I know that there's so many more people that I wish I could have helped. And um, I, I, you know, that's why I do what I do every day. I, because, you know, I hear I, I, people write to me and they write to me on social media, they email me and they say, you know, no, your work changed my life. It changed my marriage. It saved my life. And, and I love those stories. And, and that's why I do the work that I do. And frankly, I just want more of those. And I wish I would have had more of those. And I look at all the times that I, you know, that I made mistakes, that I screwed up, that I, you know, uh, trusted the wrong people, you know, and, and gave money to people who uh, took advantage of me, you know, because I'm just a very gullible, trusting person. And, you know, so because when I say something, I only say it when it's based in fact. And unfortunately, a lot of people out there aren't like that. So I got took advantage of a lot. And, you know, that unfortunately, that, that took a lot of time away uh, from what I wanted to do. And so my point is that, am I enough? Yeah, but I have I done enough? I don't think so. I really would love to do more. And I mean, I'm not trying to make myself sound like something I'm not, but it reminds me of, or when I saw that movie uh, starring Bradley Cooper, uh, American, um, American Shooter, what was his name? Anyway, the guy who, you know, with the Clint Eastwood director. Yeah, the, sni the sniper. Sniper, yes. Yeah, American sniper. And he said, it, well, you know, what, what haunts me is the guys I didn't save. And I feel the same way. Again, I'm not trying to compare myself to that guy who was a real actual hero, but I feel that way. I do feel that way. Um, and I, I do wish, you know, like we've had celebrities that have passed away and I know like Robin Williams, you know, I, I could have helped him. I, I, and I could have, uh, you know, I'm not saying I could have saved him, but I, I wish I would have had the opportunity to help him or Chris Farley or guys like that, you know, just recently. And, and, and of course, just every, everyday regular people. That's why our mission at successclaim.com is to help 10,000 small business owners double their performance and profits. And that's just a real way that we can crystallize our mission at, our, at my company. So we know, hey, we got, you know, we're just going to keep moving forward, help 10,000 small business owners double their performance and profits. And, you know, we've helped several thousand. So, you know, we just want to keep going with that. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, why have I closed a thousand more deals than you this year? You haven't, but I've closed a thousand more than you have. <laughs> <laughs> we have a competition going on who closes the most deals in a year and he beat me in 2016. So I am hell bent on taking him down. There you go. There's your wife too. Yeah. So, I, so what do I, what book do I start with Noah? Do I start with affirmations or do I start with head trash? Yeah, I'd start with affirmations. And that gives you a great overview. There's over 400 unique affirmations in the 10 major areas of life, everything from health and well-being to money and spirituality, overcoming fear, getting rid of bad habits and so forth. So that's a great one. That's available from Hay House. I mean, that's you know, on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. And then the secret code of success is where I teach about the power habits of unconsciously successful people. Um, and so, you know, that gives you a great overview of the entirety of the system of, of the whole habits. And of course, you can also go to powerhabits.com and you can get my free video training series on the power habits of unconsciously successful people. Uh, so all of, all of this is just uh, available at noahstjohn.com, our main website. You just go to the products page. We've got tons of products to help people get rid of their head trash, you know, find their voice, automate their business and, you know, help you double your performance and profits. Audio or, or text? What do you recommend? Everything. We've got everything. Um, uh, the uh, Book of Affirmations is also available in an online course. Just go to affirmations.com, A-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S, affirmations.com. That's the, and you can get the affirmation system, which has audios, videos, a downloadable guidebook. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing program. Um, and also, again, uh, at powerhabits.com, 
you can learn about uh, my program is called Power Habits Academy. And that's where I walk you through the, uh, the Power Habits system in full. That's mostly video training. Uh, so you can, um, again, check that out at powerhabits.com or affirmations.com. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? Mark, uh, in case you want to know why I beat you this year, 2017, by 1,000 properties, it might be because of this little app called HeyFocus.com. You heard of this thing? I'm going to get it right now. Go look at it. HeyFocus.com. And basically... Wait, what, is it an iPhone app? Wait. No, no, no. It's, um, it's for your Mac. It's for your computer. Oh, okay. So Mac uh, App Store? Yeah, Mac App Store. Okay. Uh, or just go to HeyFocus.com, right? Check it out. Okay. And basically what you can do is you can set up blocking for your websites or certain apps that suck the life out of you. And you can also set it up for time so that if there's, if there are certain websites that you need to whitelist or blacklist, whichever way you want, or, or apps, then you can whitelist or blacklist those. So if there's apps that you're working in because you really need to work in a certain time frame, well then whitelist those. If there's websites that you want to avoid like Gmail and you only want to have a certain window, well now you can put in that window and then when the window's up, your time is up. Time to move on. Oh, this is good. Yeah. I All right. I just this. bought it. Purchase focus. How much is this thing? It's uh, okay. For, for three Macs, it's 30 bucks. For one Mac, it's 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks. That's like, uh, that's like you know, what's, what's 20 bucks, Noah? Not much. Yeah, it's, I mean, come on, it's, it's like, like free. It's like it's like a lunch. Yeah, yeah, it's like a nice lunch. But like think about nice all the, think, think about how now you can really control. You can really control your uh, email checking, like literally, because you know, clear the client, the the mail client from your computer. Only use the web, and use the website like Gmail or something, and then only give yourself two out two windows a day. And if you miss it, big deal. Remove it from your phone, big deal. All right. Well, uh, all right. I'm, I'm going to get this. Thing. <laughs> Look sure. at this. This is, this is action. He is taking advice and springing into action. The only thing is, is that it's not on the app store and I like getting it on the app store. Oh, Mark. There's yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. I'll get it. Okay. It's done and done. So, um, Noah, what is your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the auto passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. I, I think your mentorship on, on this podcast has been absolutely invaluable. Like I said, in the beginning of the podcast, the cheapest therapy I've, I've ever received. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to learning more and um, just using affirmations to literally, uh, you know, have the best year of my life. And that includes, you know, beating Scott Todd by one deal. There you go. I, I actually, and I appreciate that, Mark. Thank you. And I, uh, I actually literally have had people at my live events come up to me and say, Noah, I've been in therapy for 20 years and you just fixed me in three days. And I'm like, thank you. I mean, it's not me, it's the system, you know? So that's, it's really nice to hear that. Uh, what I would say is just uh, for folks out there, go to noahstjohn.com and download my new book. It's called Get Rid of Your Head Trash and it is free. All right. So you can get the free resource at noahstjohn.com and just uh, there's a little button at the top that says get access to my five best mind hack mindset hacks for free and it's called again the book's called get rid of your head trash and I walk you through the three massive mistakes that even smart people make when it comes to making more money and attracting more abundance and having more wealth and freedom in their lives so again that's noahstjohn.com and uh, get my new book free I just got it. it says confirming your email your free ebook will be sent to the email address you provide it may take a few minutes to get there please whitelist oh now it's gone. Oh, look at this. Mark. And Mark. I'm watching your video. Man, I, yep. I've had this book now for like 30 minutes. You already got it? I got 30 minutes ago. I'm way ahead of you. I'm, I'm, this is why I'm going to win. This is why I'm beating you this year. Well, he was talking more. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not, that's I'm not fair. to action. That's I'm, not fair. He, you know what? He's no way going to come back on the podcast and let Scott. Anytime, out. gentlemen. <laughs> and then I can go and just while you're talking – be completely distracted and start doing my affirmations. Oh, I was focused, man. Completely unfair. 
I'm taking every advantage. I, I'm going to let you two just finish this, okay? I mean, I don't want to get in the middle of a marital spat here. Noah, what's the affirmation for this relationship? Why are Scott, Todd, and I the best business <laughs> friends and partners in the world? Yeah, that's a good I one. think that sounds great. It is a good question, right? No, I think it's a great one. Scott, so why are we? Uh, we, we bring all the good qualities out of each other. And yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because awesome. I, I ask people um, when we're looking at a deal, like, well, why, why is this going to go bad, right? I do ask that a lot. Like, yeah. where does this go wrong? Um, I, I really think that uh, it's tremendously valuable. Uh, Tony Robbins has a great quote about questions. Do you know what, do you know what, you know what, you know what I'm talking about, Noah? I can't directly quote it. Uh, I believe he said that uh, the quality of our life comes down to the quality of our questions. There, thank you. Exactly. The quality of our life comes down to the quality of our, of our questions. Do you believe that? I, I've written several books about that. So yes, I believe it. And what he did, and to, I mean, you know, Tony Robbins is great, what, but he didn't actually go into any detail on that. He kind of just let it kind of sit there and that was it. So what I've done with my work is I've taken it to the house. You see what I mean? That's what app formations are, is actually teaching you how to ask empowering questions, walking you through precisely how to do that. And then, as I mentioned in the book, giving you over 400 unique examples of app formations so that you can get started. And of course, you can customize your own app formations to suit your life, like you guys just did right here live with us. But, um, but yes, I, I would agree with that. But again, you know, I'm the guy, if you'll forgive the phrase, uh, who wrote the book on the subject. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, why is my teenager listening to everything I say and reading affirmations? <laughs> I've had, I, yes, and I've had a lot of moms and dads, Mark, who, I mean, their relationship with their teenager, I remember there's one story in particular who a dad was having a lot of trouble with his teenage son, and they were just, you know, at loggerheads all the time. He read the book of affirmations, and he realized, wait a minute, I'm, I'm asking the wrong questions. Like, why is my boy shaping up? Why is he doing all the wrong things? Da, da, da. He didn't, he, of course, he wasn't doing this consciously, right? Most of these aren't conscious, but it doesn't matter. You're still sowing those seeds. So he changed his questions. He wrote to me later. He said, Noah, my, my relationship with my son has completely changed. We are now best friends. We hang out. Before, he didn't even want to talk to me. Now we're hanging out, going to ball games. It completely changed their lives. I love it. I love it. Well, I, I want to just thank you. And I want to remind all the listeners, um, please learn more. Go to noahstjohn.com. I'll have uh, links to the site. I've links to the book. Um, and uh, this has been fantastic. Noah, was there any questions we should have asked you that we didn't ask you? You'll have to have me on another show, gentlemen, because we could be here all day, believe me. I do a three-day event, and I never stop talking the whole time. So, yes, I'll be happy to come back on. But there's, there's tons more to talk about. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Look forward to that. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll send you the booking link for sure. Cause I, I, I think, I think there's a lot of value there and I, you know, I know this is like a real estate business podcast, but if you're not really working on yourself first, you can't go out in the world and really create value for your family and yourself right. or, or anyone else. Mm -hmm. so, um, I do think this has a lot of value. Um, so thank you so much. And I, I, I want to remind the listeners the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Noah St. John to come on the podcast is if you rate, you subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of the review uh, to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Um, please, please give Scott Todd some love. This podcast has been sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Start automating your Craigslist postings. I'm Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, thelandgeek.com. I want to thank everybody. Scott Todd, you want to Pretty do good. it? Let freedom ring, baby. Let freedom ring. Thanks, Noah. Thanks, All right, bye-bye.